The bagpipe is one of the oldest instruments. To play it, you blow into a pipe attached to a leather or synthetic bag, then press on the bag to force the air out through other pipes to create sound. You transform this sound into a melody using finger holes on a reeded pipe called a chanter. They start by carving a 20 centimeter long block of wood, rounding it to a diameter of four and a half centimeters. It's part of a drone, one of three on the bagpipe, that create bass and tenor harmonies. They drill a hole that will later become an air channel. Using a lathe and a plastic template as a guide, a craftsman spins the wood to carve it, a process called turning. The lathe has a stationary carbide-tipped cutter, strong and precise enough to cut this hard African blackwood. It's a very heavy and dry wood, perfect for turning. For more intricate decorative cuts, he uses a handheld device called a combing tool. Next, he uses what's called a parting-off tool to make additional decorative grooves. He measures these grooves using a caliper to ensure they meet the specifications of the design. The craftsman drills a hole to create what's called a projecting mount. It's made of imitation ivory and at 5 centimeters in diameter, it fits on the drone like a washer. But it's just for decoration, one of seven on the bagpipe. He adds a metal component called a slide, also for decoration. Next, he turns what's called a blowpipe. This one's made of plastic to withstand moisture from saliva. Traditionalists prefer blowpipes made of wood. He adds a mouthpiece. It retracts by 20 centimeters depending on the player's height. The player blows into the mouthpiece to inflate the bag. A small metal tube between two plastic blades forms the chanter reed. When air strikes it, the reed vibrates inside the chanter, a pipe at the bottom of the instrument that has eight finger holes for notes and two for pitch adjustment. To secure it, the craftsman wraps the reed with hamstring and winds Teflon tape over the string for an airtight seal. Then a brass wire called a bridle to control the shape of the reed. Narrowing the opening produces a higher pitched sound. The craftsman ties hamstring to create traction between the drone segments holding them together. Hamstring is especially durable yet easily replaced if damaged. Here's the completed tenor drone. Next, a craftsman inserts what's called a stalk through the zippered opening of the pipe bag. The pipe bag's made of synthetic, breathable material. The five stalks fit through a rubber collar in the bag, attaching to the three drones, the chanter and the blowpipe. The craftsman inserts the chanter through a sleeve in the bottom of the pipe bag. He secures it with string, tightening it around the bag. He closes the zipper to form an airtight seal. Next, he places the pipe bag into a decorative velveteen bag cover. He inserts the stalks through holes trimmed with wool or silk fringe. A rubber valve prevents the player's air from coming back up through the blowpipe, channeling it through the chanter instead. Another part, called a drone reed, acts like a plastic tongue. It vibrates over a long hole to create the bagpipe's humming sound. The craftsman inserts the drone reed into the drone and then into its stock. Wool cords keep the drones in place while the player plays. Finally, the craftsman fits the chanter reed into the chanter, then slides it into its stock. A bagpiper must have a strong set of lungs because some songs can run for 20 minutes. Now that's long-winded. <laughs>